Hello, Sebastian Lacido, and welcome to 5-Minute Fresh Start. I'm in Job chapter 42. It says, And so it was, after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Elphaz, the Temanite, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends. There were three friends of Job through the whole book uh, that were, you know, speaking wrong and, and doing wrong in his life. And Job was consistent. He says, For you have not spoken to me what is right, as my servant Job has. There it is. Now, therefore, take for yourself seven bulls, seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So here it's near the end of the book of Job. We know what happened. Everything was stripped of Job. God gave special privileges to Satan to take everything from Job. Satan said that Job would curse God, blame God, and deny God. And Job didn't. He maintained his integrity. So he had his wife and he had these three friends through the book. And so here we are. We're ready for the deliverance of Job. We're going to read the next verses that God delivers him. But he tells his friends, uh, he tells, uh, here he says to Al Aliphaz, the Tamarite, uh, he's going to talk to two others here in verse 9, that, hey, you, you did wrong, you spoke wrong, <coughs> but if you do an offering, my servant Job will pray for you, and I'm going to forgive you of your folly. So verse 9, it says, Aliphaz, the Tamarite, and Biliad, the Shushite, and Zophar, the Namath, Namathite, went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers and sisters and all those that had been acquainted with him before came to him and ate food with him in his house, and they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversities that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver, each one a gold ring. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camel, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And so we see at the end of Job, and we, you know, there's a lot, I can't answer it in five minutes, but, but here's what we see. We see that God allowed Satan to have his way to test Job, but more importantly, to, to show Satan that somebody who's made of dust, us, man, would not buckle under all of the pressure because we have faith in an unseen God that we love and trust. So Job goes through all of this, you know, 41 chapters of this, and we get to the end, and now God is going to reconcile the books. Job's wilderness was over. And so, you know, while he lost everything, and it was very, very uh, tragic and very, very, uh, you know, pressure-filled and lots of anxiety and pain, everyone died in his life except his wife, that God restored twice as much to him. And you have to ask, well, what, what, what is going on here? At the end of the day, our life here, I mean, Job is in heaven right now. Our, and he's been there for thousands of years. Job was the first book of the Bible written, actually. It, it, it predates even what Moses wrote uh, in, in chronology anyway. And so we see here that God is showing that, you know, the, that even with the persecution that we have here, he'll bless us here, but we'll be even more blessed in heaven. Here, Job received twice, double for trouble, I call it. And he restored everything that was taken and I believe that in the end times, we're going to have the same thing happen to us. We're, you know, the Bible says in, in Revelations 13 that he, God granted Satan special powers to overcome the saints, to overcome them and take them. And so we're going to have, a, some of us will, that are on earth and, and depending on where you're at geographically, we'll have this. But understand something, there's a reward at the end of it because we're really being challenged by Satan. We're here to reveal the manifold wisdom of God. We're here to reveal that no matter what Satan throws at us, we're gonna to continue to praise and worship our God, to continue to give him glory, to maintain our integrity, no matter who's talking nonsense in our life. We love and trust this unseen God, this unseen savior that we give our lives to, to trust him in every circumstance and so these, you know, we need to understand that God is always with us. God is, 
His ears are open to our cries. His eyes are upon us. But when we go through troubles, those troubles are an opportunity to glorify God by standing and believing in an unseen God who we love with all of our hearts and a Savior who we love and confess as our Lord and Savior. That's our broadcast for today. Thanks for watching. God bless you guys. I pray God's blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.